podcast with Joe Rogan yet? No. About sports nutrition, isn't it? No. I did watch uh, some snippets from the Joe Rogan podcast with um, Connor's coach, though. Connor McGregor's coach. Yeah. It was a good uh, yeah, it was interesting. Just like the difference in mentality, mentality between Connor and his coach was just like the complete different people. Yeah. Like his coach is like dead respectful and like um, doesn't associate with like any of like the, the trash talk or like the politics behind it all. He just does the training. Yeah. And he's just like, yeah, I don't associate with that. Like it's worked for Connor and he's the highest paid fighter in the world. So he's doing something right. I um, see, yeah, yeah. I'd be a good dog to watch and to see. I think at the end of the day, you're getting, um, we may as well record this, might we? I think at the end of the day, like, you're getting paid to get punched in the face, so you may as well get paid a lot of money to do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but and I wonder how he is in training with his coach, because does his coach, like, obviously if he doesn't want to be associated with that, would he egg him on, or would he just, like, keep him grounded? I didn't, him watch, uh, I didn't watch that much into it. I think he said the way he is, like, surrounding fights and stuff like that, and the way he is in the cage is the way he is when he's uh, training as well. The snippet that I watched um, explained that, when he is uh, training up for a fight, like he's sparring or whatever with his training partners, like his brothers. Yeah. Um, what his brothers fight? Oh, like the, you know his, his brothers and aunts. Oh, like, oh yeah, yeah. Like people in the gym. Um, I actually don't know whether he's got any siblings or um, whether they they fight. I don't know. Okay. Um. What was I saying? About uh, oh yeah, fighting. so yeah, yeah, when he's sparring with like his training partners and that, like he like they, they will like trash talk each other and stuff like while he's sparring. Yeah. And after it's just like all mates. Yeah. Which is kind of like you see from Conor in the UFC. Yeah. Unless it's like kind of what happened on the weekend where it was a little more politically motivated, racially motivated from some people's perspective as well. Yeah. Um, not kind of the subject that I like to get into. I don't like to get into those sorts of arguments. Yeah, I think like it was very, um, I don't know, the, the it should have just been after the fight. It should have just he, he should have oh, both just left it at that. Like Khabib won. Okay, finish finish it off. But yeah, Khabib shouldn't have reacted the way he did. Connor shouldn't have reacted. Well, well, it was Khabib. Connor hit Khabib's. Yeah. Uh, no. I'm sure. Oh, there's a there's a he hits his nerves as well. Yeah. <laughs> there's a, there was a you know where the um on the there was on the show right? on as wasn't it. As, uh, as his training partner climbed up on the cage and Conor was on the cage, he hit he, him. He hit him, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, that was, Khabib was already, like, mid-air, like, fucking Michael Jordan about to score a three points, or uh, well, whatever it is, like a slam Superman dunk. Punch on Super fucking, slam dunk. <laughs> Superman punch on fucking Conor's jiu-jitsu coach. I don't know, yeah. Like, well, Superman drop kick, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like, you, uh, I don't know whether you've seen the still of him, like, with both feet jumping in the air. No. Yeah, no. It's like, fucking hell. <laughs> but, um, yeah, obviously, he was upset, wasn't he? Yeah. He, you know, Connor touched the nerve, but that's what Connor does. Uh, not that it should be encouraged or it should be. Um, it's like it should be advocated. When Tony Bellew fights as well, he just he always says like, before his fight, he has to literally hate that person. He has to like trash talk that person because. Just the way it is. He's he, the he, he hits them. And he has to hit them in the face. And after it, it's all yeah. mates. Yeah. yeah. You can't hit a nice guy in the face. What I did, what what I did like was um, a few years ago there was a picture of Khabib. Um, with Connor, and um, I think Connor had like won a couple of fights, and Khabib was up and coming, and um, he was like, oh, you know, this this guy, like, uh, you know, big inspiration and all that. And then obviously, then they fight, yeah. and it's like bad blood. Do you think there'll be a rematch? Um, I think there will be only because the UFC can make a lot of money from it. In Definitely. terms of in terms of fighting, no, I thought McGregor was more wasn't wasn't good enough on the night. And Khabib smashed them in every department, even on the, even like brawling. He sm- he, he battered them. Well, it was, what, was it the mid second or third round where like he just stood up with them and was like, "Let's go, man." Yeah, yeah, and he took like that's Connor's a game is yeah. on the is fighting. He was he was tired by them yeah. though, wasn't he? He'd been wrestle fucked. Yeah, he did get absolutely battered on the ground. But that's the name of the game, isn't it? And we are live. This is The Bar Is Loaded. Uh, this is a video and audio experience. I'm your host, Danny Taylor. Hi, and I'm Thomas Regan from Psych Elite Performance. 
Uh, today we're going to be talking about um, the current state of the industry and that's the sports and exercise industry, the health industry if you like. So I've been in the industry now for uh, about 10 years, we're already 2018, almost 10 years. Um, I'd I'd like to th I'd like to say that I've seen it all, but I always see something uh, that surprises me every every few months or every couple of years. There'll be something I'm just like, really, um, <laughs> or like that's really interesting. So this isn't all going to be negative. This isn't a big. Um, this isn't going to be like a big kick to the teeth of the the industry. Mm. We are going to be talking about positives. A lot of the notes that I've made are positive as well about how like. For me personally, and I'm not sure whether you've kind of acknowledged this, but or identified this, the the industry now, it's like, it's either like a group, or like half of the industry is kind of well educated or like knowledgeable and is able to apply what they know, um, to deliver results for whoever it is, sports teams, private clients. Um, and seem to have good philosophies and ethics and then there's just a big massive contrast then there's a big flip on the other side you've got uh, money making scams people who just want to lie in the pockets the and make it a quick book the bro science people the yiki gym bros people who um get big and then sit at the coaches and it's just like yeah that's uh, way left, so it? like there's such a like there's such a contrast there's such like an imbalance in the industry and like there's so much good and so much bad and I think that causes a little bit of a rift in terms of how much good information is out there for people to acquire yeah. because there's so much misinformation out there on the internet now um, and you know one coach is saying something and then some other PT is saying something else because it's worked for them and they took some fat burners or something do you know what I mean or proclaimed to have yeah. Um, or it's worked in like 30 days for them and really they've been grinding it for three years or they've been on the juice or something yeah that really that that kind of um, you know the uh, people that say like oh fat burners it, that's all you need and they don't go to, and then but the person who's taking the fat burners goes to the gym and stuff yeah. but like the average Joe just takes fat burners it's not coming off like why yeah. and they're losing weight and yeah. that, that kind of that does my edit I think I feel sorry for the people who are getting this sold if like it's people who are kind of being uh, manipulated by you know these uh, these PTs, these mm -hmm. people who supposedly care, um, and like the the mis they're being missold like something, or like um, you know the, they become part of like this big like large pyramid scheme yeah, like uh, sold the lie basically in yeah. Herbalife and yeah. like Juice Plus. Remember all that shit? Herbalife, yeah, I remember Herbalife was really like. I, I, it's still about now, you know, but only in small corners of the industry. Yeah. Remember when it was rife and like, hey, like your fucking nan was on it. Your nan yeah. was trying to sell you hair for life, and it's like, <laughs> why? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Trying to get you on a pyramid scheme. It's like, uh, do you ever remember the Avon catalog? Yes, I do. I'm exact gonna... same scheme. Yeah, my it's like on that Avon catalog though. It... Nah. <laughs> You should sell it. Oh, <laughs> man. You know, sells a boss. She definitely does, you know. She's definitely got a little firm going on all of a sudden. Um, so, pyramid scheme, do you know what it is? Yeah, it's when um, obviously you've got one person on top and then they employ someone and then they get a slice of the profit and then down, 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 down. Yeah, and the profits just go just all keep, the way back yeah, up to yeah. the top. So, the person at the top gets the maximum profit yeah. and that does absolutely nothing. They've literally just like introduced a little bit of framework for someone, and it is an illegal process. You're not allowed to do it. Pyramid schemes. It's, it's illegal. Is it? Yeah. Yep. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh. There we go. I, I didn't know it was illegal. Yeah. Oh. oh. Why is it illegal? Um, it's a scam. So it's like um, it's it's used to exploit people, um, like quite quite directly. Yeah. Um, that's why it's illegal. You could always Google this. Yeah, I didn't know it was illegal. Like I thought it was just um it's just a business plan, like a business method that you that someone would use. Illegal in the UK. It might, yeah, I don't know whether it's illegal in the UK only or like US only or um a pyramid scheme commonly known as pyramid scams. Oh, it's a business model that recruits members via a promise of payments of services for enrolling others into a scheme yeah. rather than supplying investments of sale or products of services. As recruitment multiplies, recruiting, recruiting becomes quickly impossible and most members are unable to profit 
as such, pyramid schemes are unsustainable and often illegal. Uh, pyramid schemes have ex existed for at least a century in different guises. Uh, the difference between a pyramid scheme and multi-level marketing is that multi-level marketing provides an actual product or service, whereas pyramid schemes don't and only funnel the money up from recruitment costs. So it's like, um, let's say we done one in the gym and I was selling fucking donuts and I was like, okay, Thomas, I want you to sell these donuts for me, but you, you've got to buy them off me first yeah. and you've got to then give me a fee for every donut that you sell to someone. And I also want you to recruit as many people as possible so you can buy more donuts off me so you can sell donuts to them. You'll take a cut, I'll take a bigger cut mm. uh, and we'll all, we'll all make money. Um, but like the, the bottom level person, well, it's basically getting nothing. Yeah, it's like bare bones yeah. or nothing in some cases, but they've still got to pay the next level up. Yeah. Multi level marketing um, is a little bit different. We can, we can always have a little look at that. Multi level marketing. So that's an actual product. That's where there's actual value in it. So multi level marketing, also known as MLM, um, network marketing or referral marketing, is a marketing strategy for the sale of products or services where the revenue of the MLM, uh, MLM company is derived from a non-salaried workforce selling the company's products slash services, while the earnings of the participants are derived from a pyramid-shaped or binary compensation commission system. So that's, uh, it's similar, but it's not like completely uh, illegal and there's still value even at like the bottom line. Yeah, and you're it's, still making some it's fair at every level. Yeah. I mean, I've, I'm not a really, I know you're a big, uh, you're very knowledgeable in your business side of things. I'm just, I would never have known that. Well, it's something that I've been more involved in and more passionate about sort of in recent times, especially the last couple of years, as like the, the gyms took larger steps forwards. I've had to work more on the business instead of in the business. And it was um, a book called The E-Myth. I, I was about, about to, yeah, I was about to there. Uh, it's all about like systems and like um, it just tells a story. It's a really good read. I would suggest picking it up if you're serious about um, working more on your business or like you've got a business idea and you're not sure uh, how to start. So yeah. What did you go from entrepreneur to? I went from being uh, just the, 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 the person who does all the, the technical aspect, all the technical work. Yeah. And um, so the coach essentially. And I was coaching like 12 to 14 hours every day and like absolutely destroyed me. Look at me, I was just like. Like it's hard paper around, but um, went from that to like the managerial role and the entrepreneurial role now. Where, mm -hmm. where so the managerial role is working like the day to day, and then the entrepreneurial role is working like the what's going on next. Yeah, what's what's, what's going to happen in the future? Basically. Yeah, and you've had to like take a, a, a cut in your coaching time to work on your business side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, more. basically. Yeah, yeah. So like, take a hit financially immediately more immediately and then um, put those hours that you would be coaching into working on systems of the business so that you can make that money back but in a more a long -term passive plan. way and yeah. it's long term and it's more sustainable rather than like uh, slogging every day and you know trying to, uh, trying to work for like uh, trying to coach back to back clients for like 12, 13 hours. Yeah, and, that, and you could even say that's a thing in the industry as well that people are looking for a quick book and they're not looking at the, the, the long term, long Jeopardy of, of a person's progress in the yeah. fitness industry as well. Like, so if, um, I don't know, say if someone comes in and you want to lose weight and you make them lose weight, but then when you put them, like give them a BS diet plan or something to make a quick book, but then they'll rebound and put the weight back on because yeah. it's not sustainable. Yeah. So the business side can come into the fitness industry as well. Definitely there's crossover on both sides, I yeah. think. I think uh, you made a good point there about like uh, people like you know not getting those long term sustainable results or like you know losing uh, a little bit of a uh, little bit of body weight, not necessarily body fat. Yeah. Um, as uh, like to get some quick results on the scales, uh, or like maybe even like look like you've lost some weight, but then obviously as soon as you come off that plan, like you pile it all back on. Yeah. And it's not always good weight that you'll put back on because at that point you've actually lost muscle and you've not actually lost body fat. Yeah. Um, body yeah. fat is more sustainable for your body, which means that it will just hold it, it'll just keep it in. You, you're not, your body doesn't want to lose body fat. Yeah, and I think people with um, with that is that they're always just so fixated on the weight 
and say if they, say if they gain a bit of weight, it might be muscle because of the newbies and they'll be like, oh, I don't want to gain it. And they'll be like, what, what's happening? Why, why am I actually gaining weight? And yeah. But they don't understand that it's not the weight, it's actually the body fat that's probably going down. What's, what's good is, just on the flip side, is that there are more ladies involved in like the fitness industry, strength training and things yeah. like that now, which so there's better information out there and because there's um, there are like um, public figures who are ladies who will be advocating um, like and putting out good information, so mm. advocating like strength training and uh, putting out good information. Um, as a result of that, uh, there's better information out there for everyone to use. And yeah. it was it was always like typically uh, ladies who were being misinformed, um, because typically it would be a lady who wanted to uh, lose weight or body fat if they're like you know going away or you know they want to fit into a dress or something like that yeah. because of like social pressure and da, 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 da. it was never a thing for a man but it has become more of a thing for a man now as well because of the um again this like the kind of the social pressure and like the uh, the need to look good in the gym yeah, and I, things I, like that i think with men it's a bit different in that like they want to gain muscle like so obviously back in the day there's like fitness magazines and stuff and all, all the others like big massive bodybuilders on there yeah you know and and now I, I mean i don't i don't read fitness magazines but if you glance at them they're probably going to be like sl um slimmer toner like physique kind of yeah men instead so it i think it takes the pressures off a little bit of men to not be big and not be like arnie jack you know what i mean yeah um, it's more about like the ripped look I find yeah. in, uh, in this kind of day and age people want to be lean and again that comes with like the misconception of losing body weight and not body fat and that's when it can get dangerous as yeah, well. Yeah, do you, do you think that still puts social pressures on on a definitely on a just in a different way, isn't yeah. it? It's just in a different way. Like previously it was like right, get big. So people were looking at ways that you could get big, and then obviously that led to like uh, a lot of people using steroids and not using them properly and. Um, and there's not nothing wrong with using steroids as long as they are used correctly and safely. Yeah. But um, now it seems to be more like surrounded, uh, surrounded to do with like more to do with uh, like less calories, mm. um, you more know, calories water cutting yeah. things like that. Things that are dangerous in a different way. I'd honestly rather you just took steroids than water cut or like not eat. Yeah. <laughs> Genuinely. Yeah, I um I remember when when I first started lifting and um I was just like at the time like bro signs, just get um as many calories in as possible. So I was drinking them massive them serious mass shakes. Yeah. You know, and which is just full of sugar, full of it's not full of artificial artificial sweetness probably everything. And I just didn't. I, I was like, nah, I'm not touching that anymore, because I was just drinking loads and I just got fat. Literally got fat. Thinking I was sold it alive, thinking I was gonna gain a lot of muscle from it. Yeah. Being very naive, I got really well, not really, really fat, but I did. I was a bit podgy, like. Yeah, I mean, if if you're gonna if you're gonna gain weight, if you want to put muscle on, like you, it's gonna be difficult for you to gain uh, lean body mass purely without gaining body fat. It's just a natural process of yeah. the body. If you are gaining muscle, you're gonna gain some fat with that as well. So. Um, it's like an insulation thing too. So in like different parts of the world, like for example, in hotter countries, they'll hold body fat more in like the legs and like the um, like the glutes and, and the hips and stuff like that because they don't need it to protect internal organs yeah. and insulate. So in colder in colder parts of the world as well, like you will see it more around like the stomach areas and yeah. it just depends. Like most men will, for example. Or stubborn body fat around like uh, the lower back, the hips, yeah. uh, like the lower gut. Um, ladies might get it like in the kind of in the, the back of the arms, um, the stomach, uh, the legs. You might uh, you might see it a little bit more as well. Not necessarily around the stomachs, but you do get that with some ladies too. So yeah, it's just um, I think yeah, it's just not not enough good information out there. Not enough. Not enough clear information out there there's always something that contradicts what someone said yeah um, and because of because the, because someone who looks good has said it people are quick to jump on like a bandwagon and be like oh because they can do it for themselves it means they can do it for me and that's such a misconception yeah they and and the thing with that is as well is like 
there's so much like you've got the internet there's so much research out there just research on go on google scholar and just look at what certain types of like protein shakes or certain types of you know food and, and nutrition and, and look at it yourself and just don't take the advice from a, an average gym bro who looks big you know what i mean like there's phd people out there who, who actually do this for a living research yeah they take advice from someone who can who just lifts weights yeah. instead of actual research people yeah. if that makes any sense like eric helms is such like eric helms is one of the best for nutrition and for um sports performance yeah i don't think many people give him enough credit even though he's a phd because he's not jacked he's not he's not massive well he's big but a, nat a natural guy it's, sad. it's quite sad isn't it yeah. really it's quite sad like i've been for example like you know, I'm, I'm only about 80 kilo um, when I first started the training. I tuned into last week's episode. So this is our second episode, by the way. We're, we're still on the air. <laughs> we haven't been shut down yet. Not yet. Um, not yet, but the phone might go off again. So that should be interesting. But um, yeah, if you would have listened to last week's episode, you would have heard that when I first started training, I was like, I've got stone. Um, I've got up to about 80 kilo, which is, I never thought I'd be kind of this sort of weight and probably a bit fatter than that now, to be honest. Because that's not what you're doing. I'm scared. Don't want, to, um, don't want to see it. Don't want to see it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's like I always get the I was, I always get the feeling now and then that when I'm giving someone advice, they're not taking me seriously because I don't necessarily look like I'm uh, like I'm like I'm a powerlifter. I don't look like I lift the weight that I lift, and um, I don't necessarily lift that heavy. Uh, if you're gonna compare me against like um, a competitive powerlifter in my weight class. Yeah. Um, or like you know, super heavyweight. Um, but then pe people are quick to people are quick to take the advice of someone who's um, not qualified in the industry, mm. um, has done like a couple of competitions, or just like has been in the gym and like lifted a few weights for themselves. And because they're big or strong or both, like they'll listen. And it's like I want to know what that person has done for someone else not what they've done for themselves yeah so not a one one size fits all kind that's the kind of guy i am i am a i'm more of a ask me what i've done for someone else yeah not necessarily what i've done for me, myself it's not that great mm. um i'm definitely below average in terms of power of them um and just in terms of being like an athlete in general i was i've never i was never born to lift i was never born to like be naturally athletic mm. um i think i'll i'm just good at working hard that's it and i'm really stubborn they're well, like well, they're well. my only qualities um but the amount of like the amount of people that you've coached and they are like they look good they are strong like jenny for example jenny is really strong when sean came in as well he like he couldn't squat could he really and then you've literally took <laughs> the bare bones about to squat and look at him now like just because maybe if you're not a, a good enough power lifter for yourself it doesn't matter because you you're a great coach just to add some context to that so sean when sean broly first came into the gym was in 2015 oh, um, I've Oh, Sean Green? Yeah, I was talking about Sean Green. Like, okay, I'll finish the Sean Broly story ahead, first. Ahead, ahead. Just because for me, it's... Um, I don't know, it's... I, I'd say it's uh, more of a journey for Sean Broly because of yeah. like how far he come. Yeah. When he first come in, he fell over with 140 kilo on his back. Yeah. And um, last year, he squatted 252.5 kilo. Um, and he's... That was from up, up about five to six kilo in body weight. Um, actually, probably a little bit more than that. I think he went up a weight class, mm. um, but only one weight class and like squatted the 252 proficiently as well, like with good technique, like breaking parallel on the squat. And this was at a competition as well. So um, it was, it was like, it's like the technicalities and all that of it were really great. So it was, a, it was a journey for him to like come back from falling over with just 140 kilos. Yeah. Uh, thinking he knew what he was doing at that time um, and then be able to you know a few years later after being consistent for so many years and listening to the advice that I was giving him and the, the, following the numbers that I was giving him to be able to go and squat 252 and a half kilo and yeah. um, I think he's still got that northwest squat record as well under the IPF so so he's gained 100 kilos but with better form as well 
Sean Green's another one. So you mentioned Sean Green. So to our contacts for that, when Sean first come in, Sean's um, he's got a bit of um, autism as well. Sean, I don't know whether you knew that. He's got a bit of autism. So what's great about Sean is that whatever you say to him to do, he will do it to the absolute T, like absolute letter, like the specific technique and all that, which is great as a coach. Um, but when he first come in, I wouldn't let him squat because squat was awful. Like his technique was really bad. Um, so we, we stripped it back down. We, we built back built back up with good technique after working on his mobility. Um, and for the last, I think he's been with us for just over a year now. Yeah, because he, he started a week or two after I came in for my internship. Yeah, I mean, so. he, he went from literally squatting absolutely nothing and now he's squatting 155 or 157. Something like that, but he's been to multiple powerlifting competitions and this is an autistic kid, you know what I mean? Um, it's only mild level of autism, it's not like full on. But um, he's brilliant. He's, yeah, he's he's a good a lad. Great, he is a good lifter. And, and he's he's still getting his newbie gains as well. So he is. <laughs> he doesn't get PBs every week anymore now though. No, he don't remember when he used to get people. Yeah, it's just like ridiculous. I remember the um, the deadlift and um, I think it was just me, me, you and Will and he, I think he, he told him to do one ninety or something, and he just he just pulled it like it was a warm up. You remember that? Uh, and then he yeah. and he did like and then he give it out. Let's go up, and he and he just nailed it as he went up as well. With it was ridiculous. Yeah, his, his commitment's really uh really good. To yeah, matched. It's really good. It's very very rare. I very guess that rare. that brings me on to my first point, which was, I think the industry is kind of going the way it's going now is because it's cooler to be stronger than it is to be bigger now yeah and like i think that is because in large part just to backtrack on a point i made before um to revisit that point i made before is that there's more ladies involved in the sport now yeah and like there's ladies who are out with them like a lot of men and it's great to see and i think that is like that's motivating other people to come into the sport and be like yeah. well if it's accessible for um, for ladies and people who've never lifted before, then I'm gonna give it a go. If you don't have to be big to do it, yeah. then I'm gonna try it. So it was such a misconception. Yeah, that um, is. Powerlifting was always like uh, powerlifting or like other sports, like strongman and all that. It was always um, associated with being like big fat. and fat big or like fat, yeah. um, you know not necessarily athletic. But there are like uh, th there's like CrossFit athletes and stuff who do it now. There's a, a crossover between powerlifting and Olympic weightlifting. Um, and then you've got strong man who do a little bit of both and like it's just it's great to see how yeah. this uh, these strength sports like kind of our core disciplines at the gym are, are evolving and kind of all coming together uh, and there's a crossover for all of them and there's mm -hmm. a place for everyone um, in, depending on what you know discipline that they prefer and yeah. um, regardless of their experience level or like their genetics like they're not restricted by it yeah, and I think, like, touching on that is, like, people who don't even want to compete in powerlifting or Olympic weightlifting and just do it in general, like, just, just do it anyway. Like, you don't have to compete in this comp, in, in, you don't have to compete to do it. You know what I mean? No, like, of course, yeah, if you just want to get stronger. And yeah. Be part of the community. Yeah, great. exactly. And, and I think people, some people might be a bit, um, you know, they don't want to come here because they think, oh, if I come here, I've got to compete, and I don't want to put that pressure on me, so I'll just not come. It's another misconception, yeah. especially about like tailors as well. Like you don't have to compete when you come here. Yeah. Like we'd encourage you to do it because it's a great experience, and like uh, it'll do a lot for you as an individual in terms of like confidence and things like that, and like just being involved in like that larger community. I think that's important. But if you don't want to do it, then there's no pressure to do it. Yeah. Um, but we've got people who don't. We've got people who just come and get stronger, and that's fine. Yeah. And I thought that was a, when I came here as well, is that I wanted to look good, like to take the mic out of me for doing bodybuilding. In the well, still do. People still do, yeah. But then I kind of thought, I kind of wanted, you know what, actually I want to get stronger. I want to not, I want to be a, not a, a, like a really good powerlifter, but I was like, I want to be a powerlifter. I want to like work on me technique. I want to work on me top, uh, me big three, which I have done. But I, but now, even though I'm not as, I wouldn't, I don't know, would you say I'm as big as I, I was a year ago? Uh, in a big, different way. Yeah. In a different way. Yeah, because I thought, like... You're definitely more balanced, I'd say now. Like, yeah. Obviously, like, you, your legs have gone a lot bigger. 
Um, yeah. So your lower body is starting to catch up with like the, the gains of your upper body now. Yeah. And that's obviously representative in terms of the numbers that you've been able to do. Mm. Uh, what body weight are you? 72. Remind us of your numbers. So squat? Um, squat was 187 and a half. Um, a big squat for your body weight. Um, 205 deadlift, 107 bench. Nice. Yeah, and still yet to compete as well. No, yeah, well, I was, yeah, I might compete next year. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see how all that goes. See how Canada goes. Yeah, see how Canada goes, and if I can, uh, if I can do it or not. I think because more ladies are performing strength related exercise in sports now as well, like it's becoming popular to be strong, and I think that is pushing the industry forwards as well. And um, we've got so many more independent gyms who are like the forefront of like the premier training experience in the industry now you've got like your commercial gyms where you have got kind of what i spoke about before with like this contrast the split like your independent gyms seem to always be or typically will be better quality and um and somewhat strength related mm -hmm. and that's where like uh, you will get some good coaching you'll get some good information from these places and uh, and then you've got on the flip side like your commercial gyms and that's where you have got like your pyramid schemes going on uh, and it does happen in some in independent gyms as well it just depends on their philosophies and uh, what kind of coaches they've got there yeah but then if you if you ever been into a commercial gym or you've been into one recently you can there's such a difference in like the atmosphere there and like the quality of coaching that goes on with their personal trainers yeah um, really, yeah what really annoys me one thing that just the sidetrack from that point, one thing that really annoys me um, with personal trainers um, and even like sports coaches as well is this one shoe fits all um, program and it's so annoying. It's like one shoe does not fit all yeah. in, in training in, uh, in, in this industry. Like you've got to be able to indi okay. like individualize yeah. everything. Um, what works for me will not work for you yeah. as well. And vice versa. I might be on the exact same program as you, but I'm gonna get different results yeah, completely. Definitely, yeah. Um don't get me wrong, like newbie gains, everyone gets them regardless of what you're doing. Yeah. Um but what annoys me is the lack of um specificity. Yeah. Is that right? Is that right? Specificity. The specificity, yes. <laughs> uh, leave a comment if we if we fuck that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can't It doesn't sound it doesn't specificity. specificity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, if we have fucked that up, leave a comment for us and let us know. But yeah, I've, yeah, you know I what think, I mean. Yeah, yeah I definitely. And and I think with PT, I, maybe newer PTs. Though, so it's not it's not um, against them. It's not a like an attack on them because I'm not a PT either. But um, when they come in first, just take it with a pinch of salt because it's like I said the newbie gains. But they might that PT might give it to somebody else who's been in the gym for five, six years because it's worked on the newbies, which they're gonna get gains from. And they'll just go, oh, you know what? It works for her, it worked for him, it worked for her, it worked for everyone else that I've got. And I think that's what people need. I mean, I'm not a PT, so I wouldn't, I can't comment on that, but that's just my opinion. That's what I've seen over the last um, five, six years in the industry. It's, um, I, th I don't know whether this has always been a thing, like I've, I've suppose I've only been around for a short time in terms of my experience in the industry, like coming into come up to 10 years now. It's a lot longer than most, but I still feel like I'm at the bottom. But from what I have seen, the quality is better in independent gyms. It is better in like private facilities like here. Yeah. Um, make sure wherever you go, you are trying to seek out to like a, an educated and qualified coach. Um, one thing that I always get my clients to do is like ask why, um, especially if they're going somewhere else and like someone gives them advice on something, ask them why the reason that is. Mm. So if you've got a coach or you know, you're listening to this now and you've got some reservations about like your program that your instructor's getting you to do, ask them why they're getting you to do that. Yeah. Um, and if they can't explain why, then they, obviously the, the, they haven't got the knowledge to be able to, um, to be able to deliver results for you. Yeah, and another thing as well is that if, you can't see results and you're not getting stronger then tell your coach like don't just go on a program and just um you know what, what's the word look, like not i can't even think of the word i look for you know just going through the motions like 
if it's not working for you, tell your coach it's not working. And if they and if they can't give you a, a um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Here we are. I'm tired today. I'm tired today. Um, oh, I've lost my trail of thought. So they can't give you an explanation. Is that what you're yeah, to like say? they can't. Yeah, and they can't give you. Yeah, they can't give you an explanation, and they can't give you something else to do. Right. So then just give them off. I, I think just give them off if it doesn't work, and and they've only got like one size fits all. Just give them off and go yeah. and find another coach. Yeah, that, definitely make sure you do some good research first. There's some absolute dog shit out there, isn't there? Mm. It's just ridiculous. The standards so low in terms of like new personal trainers becoming qualified. Anyone can do it now. Like people's nans getting qualified and <laughs> we've been on the attack for people's nans that yeah. <laughs> juice plus pyramid schemes getting personal get, getting qualified as personal trainer there's probably nans out there who are better to be honest yeah definitely um but I'm, the problem like the points i'm trying to make and like if, if, if you are if you are a nan by the way and you qualify a personal trainer like please don't take any offense um it's the it's the principle that i'm trying to explain so it's more like kind of these uh, these uh, these companies who are just trying to get people in to make more money yeah and it's kind of like this conveyor belt system where and um, they're just trying to draw people in make a quick book off them yeah like they've hit the absolute minimum is that like you know given given the criteria to pass yeah and then um, and then we've got you know a uh, so it really it, it could come down to the actual the, these pe these companies who are quali like qualifying these coaches yeah. and give them that piece of paper. Yeah. Like th this is the problem. It's like it's so cheap to get qualified now as well. Like uh, when I first started, it was about twelve hundred quid. I done my uh, course with a company called Focus Training, who have a really high standard. And the more the more trying to catch you out, the less trying to pass you. Yeah. Uh, which I think should be the absolute standard for these companies. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, people don't give enough. I think these companies like they're making a quick, I'm making a quick book, but it's like people, um, some people who like go on the like my cousin for example. She, I mean, she works now, but she when she was on the doll, um, she had she, he said to her, "Do you want to just do a PT course? Do you want to just do a PT training course?" Yeah, all right. So I don't know how much that goes on. Like when you go to the job centre, I'll just be a PT. Because we'll pay for it. Uh, it's not good, is it? I know. It's. And then what if they don't train as well? I know. I remember somebody in JD gym, right? He was a personal trainer, but he hardly ever trained himself. And he. So it's a bit of a grey area, isn't it? It's like you don't necessarily have to be able to do it yourself, but I do feel like you'd have a better understanding if you did. Um. It really depends on your ability to teach. Like, you've got co you've got coaches and personal trainers, and I think this is something we talked on last week as well. You've got your personal trainers who are just giving you a program to follow and a one shoe fits all kind of program. Yeah. Uh, and like, it's the same program for every single person who comes in that day. Um, excuse me, the the coffee burping there. Um, and then. You've got coaches who are actually invested in you, spend time in their own time as well, most of the time, programming for you, um, you know, spreadsheets, um, spending time discussing goals with you, they actually care and they deliver. Um, I forgot the point I was trying to make. <laughs> yeah, it's just early in the morning. Thing, it's too it? early. It's too early. I think it was more to do with like the standard. I think that, that, yeah. that's what I was trying to say. So, um, this just this just seems to be such a contrast, and like, and yeah. this is the main problem in the industry for me at the moment. Like, you've got people who care and people who don't, and it's okay if you just like if you want to make money from it. Like, of course, like that comes as a standard. Like, you need to be able to live. You want to you want a good lifestyle. That's fine, but there should be a level of like a duty of care. Yeah, at the very least, a level of care. Um, and you can and I reckon people you'd be able to um know that by the first time that you meet your coach or your personal trainer is that when you have a consultation with them how long is it is it 10 minutes that just shows like no, that i don't think they're really that bothered if they're actually willing to take time and efforts to speak to you about everything and you know your goals all that sort of thing they'll spend if you spend more time with them 
then go with that coach because it shows that from the get go they are they actually care about you and they actually want you to succeed, not just not just ten minutes. Oh, what do you want to do? Lose weight? Okay, tick that box. You can get on the treadmill. All right, thirty pound an hour. So yeah, while they're on the phone. Yeah, exactly. This, this is some, like this just brought me on to another point. While while we're talking about the negative part, it's like. You've got these social media like icons, like these people who've got like thousands of followers and have probably paid for them. Mm. Um, and there's just like they're putting out some really bad information and people like because it works for them individually and it's just all shit. It's all absolute dog shit. It's all videos and pictures of them, like especially with ladies with the fucking asses out and like um lads flex and then it's like I don't want to know what you can do for yourself. I want to know what you can do for someone else. Yeah, and that's do you know what I mean? It's far too much of it. I don't give a fuck how big your bicep is. Yeah. I don't give a fuck how good your ass looks. It's like, can you do that for someone else? Yeah, and but the thing with that is as well is that um, I know it's not not an attack on these women, but they put like silicone in their asses. You know what I mean to make their asses look better. They don't actually squat. I don't, I've, I've you know, not heard of anyone doing that in the industry, but I wouldn't be but surprised. But you know what I mean, like on Instagram and stuff, though? It's like the whole Kardashian thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and, and, and how many people do you think they'll just go, oh yeah, we, we squat too, and then they might be might sell a lie. Yeah, to make them quick, quick. Don't get me wrong, like, there's nothing wrong, nothing wrong with, like, advertising what you can do for yourself as well. Like, you know, everyone's got to start somewhere, but at what point do you, you need to ask yourself at what point? You need to flip that, like you need to start. For me, like best advice that I can give you, if you're one of these people that we're speaking about and you, you haven't already switched this off because you're offended. <laughs> yeah, they probably, they probably did that about 20 minutes ago, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, so, but if you are still listening, I would definitely recommend, like the best thing you could ever do is stop posting about yourself and start posting about what you can do for other people. It doesn't just advertise like what you can do as a coach. But it also it also lifts people up who like you're posting about. Imagine the confidence boost that someone's gonna get from you and giving them a spotlight on your social media and like that could inspire someone else to get in touch with you to as, um, as a, I was thinking that then like you know I mean? people it's, who are looking at people who are looking at their Instagram would be like, look how many people he's changed, look how the lives that he's changed, exactly. look how uh, 10, 20 people are really good. Yeah. So you know what? I know we I know he's talking about, let me do it, I'll go and do it. Too. Don't be so focused on like the likes and all that shit as well, and like people commenting. Like yeah. your next big client could be on the sidelines. They might not have never, never necessarily like commented or engaged with any of your content. So just be patient and regularly post good content. It doesn't matter what it is, really. Just put good stuff out. Yeah. Like document what you're doing with your clients and put that up, or ask people to uh, video their sessions and or like you know the the occasional lift or exercise or whatever and then um, ask them to put that up and you can repost it or whatever like yeah. you know and don't look for short term gains either like think that this client you're going to be with them for a year two years three years yeah. plan for the long term yeah plan for the long term not for the short term because for like say if you're with them for a month you make 50 pound but if imagine if you were with them for three years how much is that yeah so it's, it's worth a lot more to to invest in your pet into the the clients and it increases their trust with you as well so like if they can trust you more they're gonna um they're gonna stay with you and if they feel secure with you they're gonna stay with you as well so there's a lot of psychology with that in terms of um like keeping a client and you know investing in your clients from a psychological point of view as well interesting Interesting. So, in terms of uh, the so the, the state of the industry, in your opinion, then, because you know, as a sports psychologist or mental conditioning coach, um, what's your opinion on it in the current state of the um, industry? Just to come full circle, because we, we, I think we've covered most of the points that I wanted to talk about anyway. I know you you wanted to discuss. Yeah, in in too, terms so. of in terms of the industry, I'm not as I'm not. What about your part of the industry then? Because well, it's included in the, in yeah, the I'm more I'm more focused on the health aspect more than the industry, like the fitness and industry, fitness industry aspect. I'm more involved with the health and you know health benefits and and how it helps with you know like reducing depression, reducing you know cardiovascular disease, blah blah yeah. blah. 
And I think with in terms of that, it we need to look at the psychological aspect for health benefits because say like how many people get sick? How many people have depression? Yeah. How many people have got mental it like mental disorders or whatever and they're not doing exercise? Yeah. And I think I think it's a it's a part of the industry that nobody really talks about and it's a very grey area, I think. Yeah. That it's not health needs to be for everybody, not just for a certain few. If that makes any sense. Yeah, it does, yeah. Yeah, and you know, in terms of like and people people don't understand that like say if you're just a couch potato, you know, you don't do anything, you go to work, you sit down in your car all day, you're in traffic. You sit down, go to the office, you're not doing any type of exercise. It has a real bad bearing on like the whole country as a whole, like the NHS. You yeah. know, people are equipped put, putting themselves in for depression or the dying of heart attacks yeah. or the dying of coronary heart disease yeah. is currently the biggest killer in the UK. Yeah, or you know, to a certain degree, cancer. Yeah. Because exercise can actually reduce cancer. Of course it can. So by doing exercise, can, by doing exercise, could actually take a bearing off the NHS. Yeah. But people don't really understand. I don't think they understand that. Like, exercise is free as well. You don't even need a PT or a coach. You can just go for a run. Exactly. Just move. Just, yeah. Just, just move. go around the park. Walk around the park for an hour. If you don't want to go out, you can literally move around the house. Yeah. Literally, it's like any, just, any some static stretching or just yoga. All you need is a mat. Yeah. You, everyone's got a laptop or a phone nowadays. Go on YouTube. YouTube. Uh, you, that's what I do. YouTube, yeah. yoga. Breaking neck in the house. Yeah. <laughs> thirty minutes. That's all you need to do. That's that's the the minimum. I think is thirty minutes. Yeah, just go for a brisk walk. Like, yeah. yeah. It's so healthy walk. to go for a little walk now and then. Cycle to work. Walk yeah. to work. How long does it take to get to work in a car? Probably like if you're stuck in traffic, it could take ages. Yeah. Like I, it took me an hour to get here today. And so what bikes? What be your best advice for someone who like just can't get motivated to do it? Then so from a from like a, a psychological. Um, I'd start small, like make short term goals, and then when you get more comfortable, do longer term goals. And you know, so for example, go on your bike for if, if you've got a, a a punching bag at home or a bike, five minutes. Yeah. Five minutes is all you need. What's five minutes in a day? It's nothing really. Like uh, remember when uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger said, if uh, if the president has time to work, this when it, Obama was president. Like if he's got time to work out, then you've got time to work out. I think they all do. Yeah. I think I think it's like I think they'll all have like coaches and stuff, and it's all part of like. Obviously, you're gonna have to stay healthy to be in such an important role. Yeah. Um, regardless of you know what role that is. Yeah. Whether it's president of the United States or whether you're you know a manager in a factory, they're like it doesn't like you're an important role. Like I think um, I think like some countries in Asia have got it right. Uh, I think they do it in like China, maybe Japan as well. But um, a lot of the companies uh, by law before they start the working day, they've got to do I think ten to fifteen minutes of exercise. Yeah. And so that improves um, concentration, doesn't it? it? Exactly. And studies are made. I don't know whether you've looked at these studies, but uh, it improved their work rate. Yeah. And they, yeah. they were able to produce more results because they felt obviously felt more like they could concentrate more, they felt more active, they were happier. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they felt like they were having more fun at work as well, which is really big important thing because people are uh, aren't happy with what they're doing. Yeah. They're in a bit of a crux, aren't they? They can't get out of it because obviously it's paying the bills and there's no other opportunities out there for them at that time. So, um, yeah, I think things like that would be like really good for this country. And then it would take the burden off like the NHS and yeah. just having it as like a requirement for every company to do that every morning before like, you know, the, uh, the working day starts kind of thing. Yeah. And how many, like how many people go to the gym at like six o'clock in the morning because they've got no time throughout the day to, so, I, I mean, if you're willing to wake up that extra yeah. hour earlier, I, more than likely you will probably feel the benefits of that by going to the gym and go and, and having a bit of time to yourself. Yeah. And even even if it's 10, 20 minutes, just do something and then, you know, progressively make it better, make it longer, you know, make your exercises longer, make your 
poses on that, but, you know, stuff like that. You do feel better after the pose, don't you? Definitely. Oh, yeah, yoga is ridiculous. Like, I, every time that I do yoga, I always feel like I need to do more. I really, like, I'll do yoga for 40 minutes, 45 minutes, sometimes even an hour, depends how tight I feel. But I, I feel like I, I could do it for an extra half an hour. You've studied um, like the meditation aspect as well, haven't you? So like yeah. breathing and stuff like that, I believe just from like doing breathing exercises is well, it's a form of exercise. Mm. Um, it's so just you... quietening your mind really. Like your mind, like like mindfulness is just you know help as well, yeah. doing something to shut off everything in your head. Like if you're like a big businessman or you know if you're stressed in work, just even doing ten minutes of you know, meditation is will help relieve stress. I think I, I personally, I like meditation. I like its, um, I like its values, but it doesn't work for me as much yeah. as doing yoga. Because I think while I'm doing yoga, I'm still meditating in a way. I'm shutting off everything in my mind and just focusing on the yoga poses. So I'm getting the mindfulness aspect aspect of shutting the brain off and you know, not thinking about anything but I'm getting physical benefits as well yeah so maybe people could try that instead of just meditating do the, do the yoga but only concentrating on yoga yeah and, and you'll probably will feel so much better like mm. it's ridiculous how how yoga can help I love it interesting stuff I think we pretty much covered um, everything that I wanted to discuss mm. um, unless there's anything uh, any other points that you want to make today um, not really, I mean, people, it, cause the health in this, well, the health aspect of fitness, not many people do it. I just think that more people need to just do it, to be honest. Yeah. Like, um, I read, well, one of my modules in uh, my master's degree was uh, depression and how exercise can help depression. Mm -hmm. And so I remember watching a video that one of our lecturers sent and she was doing um, 10 push-ups a day yeah. and she felt ridiculously better. all it takes, isn't it? Yeah. Once, like one small like, side thing every day, it takes 30 seconds. Yeah. If that. What, what's 10 push-ups? Exactly. But for, for someone who, who was depressed, she said it was like the best thing for her. Yeah, such a relief. Yeah. Interesting stuff. So I think in conclusion then, um, the state of the industry, we probably didn't touch on all aspects of the industry. We'd probably have to sit here all day, mm. um, but we can definitely revisit this topic. But if you guys have got any thoughts on the current state of the industry, if you want to give your two cents on it and let us know what you think, then uh, leave a comment because we're, we're interested to discuss this further. If yeah. you want to come and discuss this with us over a coffee, more than welcome. I think it'd be an interesting chat. I think what we didn't touch on was the current state of like the sports industry yeah. um, and how that like ties into like the fitness industry as well. So like day, S and T coaches with sports teams and stuff like that. But typically, you have got like kind of uh, within the within the sports health and fitness industry, you've got this like uh, this kind of like trio. You've got like your independent gyms, people with uh, who typically will have um, uh, good knowledge and be able to deliver results for clients. And then you've got like your sports teams, coaches, like your S&C coaches who can do a uh, similar, if not a better job than the independent coaches because it's more specific. Um, and then you've got like your PTs and most of the time it's absolute dog shit. Yeah. So you need to try and like uh, move towards like the S&C or like the independent gym kind of, uh, kind of route. Yeah. Kind of new, yeah. Great stuff. Well, thanks for listening anyway, guys. And again, if you've got any thoughts on that subject, I'm sure you do. Leave a comment in the comment section. You'll be able to find this video on Facebook, Instagram, IGTV, and YouTube. We're, we're on uh, over, I think, 10 or 11 platforms now for the podcast. So, so no excuses. For not, absolutely no excuses. To not, watch, or to not listen or to not watch us. You can watch us. You can listen to us. You can do both at the same time if you're that way inclined. I don't know where else to go with that, but uh, <laughs> iTunes seems to be our most popular one at the moment, so you can yeah. catch us there. We'll put all the links in the description if you're watching this as well. Um, you will be able to listen to us on Spotify, SoundCloud, Anchor, there's a few others as well. 
uh, all the most popular ones we have. And um, so do listen. And if there's something, uh, if there's a platform that you listen on that we aren't on, then let us know and we'll try and get on it. Yeah, subscribe as well. Thanks for listening, guys. Thank you. Thank you.